Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Today we're going to be discussing the new Estonia Digital Nomad Visa. So stick around, it's going to be exciting because there is a big trend which is going on and I'm going to tell you about it and how in the future this could really enhance your ability to travel and be all over the place. It's going to be pretty great to be a digital nomad which is pretty fantastic. Before I do that though, there's something I would love for you to do for me which would be please if you do not mind hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. If you like the video, click the like button. If not, tell me why in the comments. And if you're at all interested in the subject, which is uh, how to uh, optimize your international tax, to pay the lowest legal amount of tax possible, to protect your assets, to form offshore companies, bank accounts, get residencies, citizenships, invest abroad, hire abroad, etc. please reach out to us. You can book a call with me, clarity.fm, uh, uh, at the... Uh, you can book a call at clarity.fm forward slash Michael Rosmer in the link below, or you can visit our websites, offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com. Okay, so in June, the country of Estonia, which is a typically progressive country in terms of these things, they were the first ones to do e-residency, they're kind of a forward-thinking, cool place in that regard, uh, introduced a digital nomad visa. And they just started accepting applications. I think it was at the 1st of August. So very cool. I want to go through it with you and kind of explain to you a little bit about what it is, what it is not, how it may apply to you, and we're gonna kind of go from there. So, uh, first of all, quick little thing to note, which is uh, this is a common trend, and I'm gonna do a series for you on these different digital nomad visas. So this is the first one. Uh, Germany, Estonia, Costa Rica, Norway, Mexico, Portugal, Czech Republic, Croatia, all now have digital nomad visas, so I'm gonna be covering each of them so you can understand them. And so, yeah, let's, uh, let's kind of go through what is applicable here. So first things first, uh, and by the way, I'll cover the tax as well so you understand well, what are the tax consequences of this? Do I get some special advantage because there's a bunch of tax competition entering the world, which is a good thing for us. Now, uh, so the first thing to understand is this is not a residency permit, okay? There's a difference between a digital nomad visa and a residency permit. I have talked recently about, say, how Portugal has a really easy residency or pretty easy residency into the EU along with a few other countries. And, you know, it's great. It's got certain consequences. This is not that. This does entitle you to stay in Estonia for a year. Okay, so it's a one-year visa, but it is not a residency permit. Okay, now, is that potentially a way to explore some of the rest of the EU, bypassing their short stay uh, Schengen rules where you can only spend 90 days every 180 days? Possibly. In theory, they say no, because they say, well, you know, you're allowed to spend that time in Estonia, but you're not allowed to spend it in these other Schengen countries. The problem is, hey, listen, you're in the Schengen zone. There is a lack of borders. So, you know, how do you know that I traveled between these different places, right? That's an interesting, uh, interesting question. You could always say, hey, listen, I was in Estonia. What are you, I'm allowed to be in Estonia. What are we going, what are we talking about here? As long as you don't have any stamps on your passport, who knows, right? That being said, uh, that's not really recommended just because of the fact that it hmm, could get you into trouble, right? Second of all, uh, this does not lead to permanent residence. It does not lead to citizenship, okay? So you, this is not like, hey, you can start the clock ticking and get a cool citizenship. No, not an option. The third thing is, who does this apply to? So it applies to basically three groups of people. Number one, people who are working for foreign employers. Okay, so hey, you have an employer who's registered abroad, no problems, you can get this. By the way, this is like a pretty inexpensive thing to get. It doesn't cost a lot, paperwork is not too complex. Uh, the process of going through is like 15 to 30 days approximately. So pretty quick process to get approved. Pretty easy, pretty streamlined. You would kind of expect that with Estonia. They tend to do a pretty good job. The uh, next group of people are people who have their own company. And so they're working for their own company based on uh, being, being brought. And now I'm going to have to look up something because I am uh, forgetting what the third group is. So let's see here. I have my notes in front of me, which I don't normally like to do. But anyway, uh, oh yeah. If you ha are a freelancer who, has who is working for clients abroad, that's the third group. So any of those three groups of people can qualify for this digital nomad visa, which is super cool. What about taxes? Okay, some people say, oh, well, you know, do I therefore get some special tax treatment? Uh, the way that it works is that if you spend more than 183 days, or I guess it's actually 183 days or more in Estonia, 
then you qualify as an Estonian tax resident, and then you're going to be subject to full Estonian tax in Estonia. Okay, so there's no special tax regime. You don't benefit in any particular way for doing that. And then the last question is, all right, uh, let's say that I'm going through, I get this visa. It allows me to spend some additional time there. That's really cool. I like that. My ability to explore Europe is increased. Great. Can I, if I come to the end of that period, just go and do this again? So what you can do is you can do visa runs, basically, where you can leave Estonia and come back and leave Estonia and come back. And you can do this. Uh, to avoid the 183-day rule, okay? So you can say, oh, okay, great. Potentially, you could spend a bunch of time in Estonia uh, without triggering this by leaving and coming back, okay? So that, that is a possibility. However, uh, can you be in a situation where you can just perpetually renew this thing? No, you cannot. Uh, there's an EU rule that I think it's like uh, you're allowed 540 days every 728 days, something like that, uh, in the European Union or in the, the Schengen zone anyway, uh, without a residency permit. So if you exceed that, you're finito. You, uh, you cannot, cannot do that. So anyway, it opens it up a lot more for if you want to be able to explore a place for a little bit longer, you want to hunker down and do some work, etc. You don't have to be so worried about leaving. And, you know, but on the other hand, does it give you a bunch of these other benefits? Uh, not so much. So anyway, that is the story with the Estonia digital nomad visa. Like I said, I'm going to be covering the other ones here in future episodes and they will tell you in some cases now there are tax incentives to go some places for digital nomads and I'll cover that as we get into it. If you like the video, please click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, click the like button. If you have any questions about it, put it in the comments below. And if you're interested in these subjects, like I said, reach out to me, reducing your international tax, traveling and like uh, working abroad, uh, moving your business abroad, residency permits, second passport, citizenships, uh, asset protection, company formation, bank accounts, etc. Clarity.fm forward slash Michael Rosmer. Link below or visit our websites offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com. I'm going to see you guys on the next video.